Hey guys, welcome back. This is Saifuddin Ghanizada with another video. Welcome to Tech for All. Today I will be showing you how to configure the TP-Link 400 Mbps wireless in router. The model of the router is TLWR940N. Let's start the configuration now. First of all, turn on your router by pressing the power on button on the back of the router. Now take a network cable, connect one side to one of the four LAN ports on the back of your router and the other side to your laptop. Go to your laptop's network and connection settings. If you don't know how to do that, press Windows Alt to open run and write down ncpa.cpl and hit enter. In here you will find out the Ethernet adapter. Right click on the Ethernet adapter and click on status. Now click on the details button. The plus point of the TP-Link router is that it will automatically give you an IP from its own range. In my case, it has given me the IP of 100. Now you need to know the default gateway of the wireless router, which is mentioned in here. You can access the router by typing this address in your web browser. Open your laptop's web browser. Type 192.168.0.1, which is the default IP address of the wireless router. And then hit OK button. This is the main page of the wireless router. First, it will ask you to create a login password. Type in the login password. It has a few recommendations that the password should not contain a space. It should be 6 to 32 characters long and must have at least two types of the following characters, number and symbols. I have written the password. Now I will confirm the password and then click on the create button. It will automatically redirect you to the quick setup page. If you are not familiar with the configuration of the router, the best way is to go with the quick setup. Click on the next button. Here it will ask you, what do you want to use this router for? If you are using it as a wireless router or access point or the range extender. I will go with the access point option. Choose the access point option and then click on next button. Here it will ask you for the wireless network name. I will change the network name. Take for all. In channel, it's better to go with the auto option. Now select the wireless security mode, the recommended system and it's a better practice to select the WAPA2 security mode. Enter the wireless password. Then click on the next button. Here you have to choose whether you will assign a static IP address for the wireless router or not. If you choose the static IP option, then you need to assign a static IP address for your router. If you select the smart IP DHCP option, the wireless router will give a unique IP address for each of the device which will authenticate or ask for an IP address from the wireless router a good option then click on the next button congratulations you have successfully configured the wireless router now that i have finished the quick setup i must reboot the wireless router so that the changes to take effect click on the reboot option and wait for the wireless router to be rebooted will be automatically redirected to the login page. Enter the password and then click on the login button. Now you can see that the wireless router is configured. It will broadcast the SSID tech for all and it is automatically using the channel 4. The second way of configuring this wireless router is to go manual. So we need to go and check each options one by one. First of all, we will go with the working mode. 
in the working mode option you have three options whether you want to use this device as a standard wireless router as an access point or as a range extender as i mentioned earlier i will go with the access point option click the access point option and then click on the save button here it will say that the changes will take effect after a reboot click on the ok button to reboot the wireless router manual setup each time you select an option you have to reboot the wireless router it's a lengthy process but it's good each time the router restarts it will automatically redirect you to the login page enter the password and click on the login button now that we have selected the working mode we will go with the network option click on the network button in network button there is only one sub menu which is LAN. In LAN you have two options. The first is static IP and the second is smart IP or DHCP. As I mentioned earlier in the quick setup mode, if you choose the static IP, you need to enter an IP address for your wireless router and then you need to configure the DHCP server so that each device that needs to be connected to the network it asks for an IP address and if you have not configured the DHCP server the device cannot be connected to the network let's test the static IP address I will not change the IP address on the subnet mask I will leave it as it is and then click on save it As you can see that I cannot access the wireless router because I have assigned an static IP address. Now all I need to do is open the network and sharing center and then assign a static IP address for my computer. To do so right click on the network adapter and select properties. Then from the following menu click on the IPv4 option and then assign an IP address. It is good to mention that the IP address you want to assign your computer it should be from the same range that the wireless router have in my case I will assign the IP address 192.168.0.100 the subject mask also should be the same as wireless router and the default gateway IP address should be the IP address of the wireless router so that you can access it 192.168 dot zero dot one click on the ok button and then click again on the ok button now you need to check that if the wireless router can communicate with your computer or not for this purpose open cmd and then ping the ip address of the wireless router as you can see that my computer can communicate with the wireless router which means that now I have to enter the IP address of the wireless router 192.168.0.1 and then hit enter button enter the password and then login now we need to go with the wireless menu click on the wireless menu the first sub menu under wireless menu is wireless setting here you need to assign the wireless network name it is good to lift the channel auto and then the mode should be both 11n and 11gn it's good to use the mixed mode and the channel weight also it's good to leave it as auto and then click on the save button the next sub menu under wireless menu is wireless security here you will assign a password for the wireless network. It is good to select the wireless security WAPATU ESK. The encryption mode always go with the ES version. Enter the wireless password.
and then click the save button. The third sub-menu under wireless menu is wireless MAC filtering. If you want a specific devices to access the network, uh, it's good to use the MAC filtering. Otherwise, you don't need to enable it. I will show you a demo how to use it. Click on the enable button to enable the wireless MAC filtering. And then here you have two options. If you choose the first option, which is deny, all the IP addresses listed here cannot access the network. If you choose the second option, which is allow, all the devices that the MAC is listed here can access the network. It will add an extra layer of security because if you share the wireless password with another person and you don't allow or add the MAC address of the device, the device cannot access the network. It is good to always use MAC filtering with the allow option. I don't need to use MAC filtering so I will disable it for now. The fourth sub-menu under wireless menu is wireless advanced. Here you can choose whether the wireless router should use high volume of power, middle volume of power or low volume of power. I will leave it as default. The next sub-menu under wireless menu is wireless statistic. Here it will show you that how many devices is connected to your wireless network. Click on the refresh button. In my case, I haven't connected any wireless device. Uh, that's why it's zero here. Let me connect my phone. Now you can see that my mobile is successfully connected and it will show the MAC address, the receive packet and the send packet. If you want to disable this device so that it cannot access the network, click on the deny button and the IP will be blacklisted and it cannot access your network. The next sub menu under wireless menu is throughput monitor which will show you a real time graph of the network that how much ABPS is currently used by which device. Click on the start button and then it will show you here. In my case, no network device is connected. That's why it's not showing. Let's jump to the next menu, which is DHCP. As I mentioned earlier that I have assigned a static IP address for my wireless router, I need to configure the DHCP server. Click on the enable button to enable it. The first thing you need to do is assign the first IP address and the end IP address so that each network device will get an IP address between these two IP addresses. The third thing is the default gateway that you need to assign here. If you have a domain controller, you can also assign it here. And if you have a DNS server, you can assign it here. Primary DNS, secondary DNS. In my case, I don't have any DNS and domain. I will go with the default gateway and then click on the save button. The next option under the DHCP menu is DHCP client list, which will show you a list of all the clients that are currently connected to the network through DHCP. As you can see, that there is currently no client connected to the network. That's why the DHCP does not show any client. Let me connect my phone and then refresh the list. Here you can see that I have connected my phone. It will show you the assigned IP address, the time that the device has taken the IP, the MAC address, and the client name. The next sub-menu under DHCP menu is Address Reservation. Here you will reserve a specific IP address for a specific device so that when you start the wireless router and the DHCP server starts submitting the IP addresses, this IP address will be automatically excluded from the DHCP and it will be reserved for the specific device. The next menu is System Tools. Here you can change the time zone of the wireless router. In my case, it is plus 4.30, which is Kabul time. Uh, the date is currently March 4, 2021. Time is 8.40. Here you can assign the NTP server if you have any. If you live in a time zone that requires daylight saving, you can enable it. I don't need the daylight saving, so I will disable it. Click on the save button to save the time and date. The next sub-menu under system tool is LED control. Here you can see that the LED status is on. Here you can also turn off and on 
the LED by time. For example, if you enable the night mode, it will automatically turn off the LED from this time to this time. I don't want the night mode to be turned on. The LED should be always turned on. And then click on the save button. The other menu is diagnostic. Through diagnostic menu, you can ping the devices which are currently connected to your network and see whether any device is up or down. Is it currently connected to your network or not? The next menu is the firmware upgrade. Here you can upgrade the firmware of your wireless router if a new firmware is released. You can upgrade it only in offline mode. First you have to download the firmware and then click on the browse button. Select the firmware and then click on upgrade. The firmware of your wireless router will be upgraded. The next menu is factory defaults. Using this menu you can completely reset the wireless router to factory. Click on the restore button, all the settings that we have done will be erased and the wireless router will go back to its factory defaults. The next sub menu is backup and restore. Through backup and restore, you can backup the current configuration of your wireless router and then you can restore it on the same model of wireless router. Using the restore option, you can restore a backup which you have already taken in the past. The next menu is reboot menu. By the name of the menu, you know that you can reboot your device using this menu. Using the auto reboot time, you can automatically reboot the wireless router. It has two options. The first is timeout. Here you will specify after how many hours and minutes the device should be restarted. Or you can restart the wireless router as is scheduled. For example, I want to restart the wireless router every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday at 1 a.m and then click on the save button, the wireless router will be automatically restarted on the selected date. The next sub menu under system tool is administration. Using the administration, you can change the admin password of your wireless router. First, you have to enter the old password, then the new password. Again, verify the new password and click on the save button. The wireless router will be restarted. You will be redirected to the login page and you have to enter the new password then you can access the wireless router the next sub menu and their system tool is system lock which will show you the lock of all the settings and options that are changed by date and time i hope you have enjoyed the video and know how to configure the wireless router give the video a thumbs up and share it with your friends till next time hasta la vista